Hey friends, Pastor Jack Matchuk here from Central United Methodist Church right here in Waterford, Michigan. Each Sunday morning, uh, we provide message notes. We are in a time of virtual services only, so you can receive these notes in a Friday email. If you contact our church office, uh, you can um, find these or they are also available on our website. Our website is www.waterfordcumc, stands for Central United Methodist Church, dot org. So you can get all this information. You can get the bulletin. You can get the prayer uh, request. You can get lots of information about our, our mission, our ministry, and our worship services. And you can join us at least now virtually, um, probably for the next month, maybe a month and a half. I'm hoping that it's not much longer than that, friends, but I make no promises uh, we are called by God to keep everyone safe, and that is what we are about in terms of uh, doing the, these devotions and providing our worship services online. Well, we've been talking this week about the parable of the sower of the seeds. It is found in Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. In that same uh, chapter, right after verse 9, you'll find the disciples asking Jesus, well, why do you always teach in parables? And Jesus explains, look, you know, basically parables are short stories which provide a spiritual truth and insight. And so, uh, he then, after telling them about what parables do and, and the purpose of them, he then explains a parable. And this parable uh, in Matthew's gospel, 13th chapter, is unique in that it's the only one that Jesus gives this in-depth explanation of what it means. So it's kind of cool in that way. And what made the parable of the sower of the seeds so real to the people to whom Jesus was preaching and teaching was the fact that the people gathered around him knew about farming. They knew about vineyards. They knew about the agricultural area in which Jesus was speaking. In fact, in my mind's eye, I can see Jesus speaking to them and looking off to the side, maybe watching a farmer uh, till the soil. And perhaps the eyes of the, the people to whom he was teaching, their eyes followed his eyes and they saw the farmer. And then Jesus says, let me tell you, about the sower of the seeds. Now, I've already explained throughout this week that God is the sower of the seeds and that I believe that we have a responsibility to be the sower of the seeds and that seed is the word of God. But then God says, uh, or excuse me, Jesus says that the scattering of those seeds, we scatter them where we will and some fall on different types of soil. And so our work as followers of Christ is also to tend to the conditions of our soils to make soil or soul soil, as I was calling it uh, this whole week, so that we would let the word of God take root in our lives, grow and bear fruit for God's kingdom on earth. So uh, I wanted to read another example of how God is a gardener, how God is a, is a vineyard owner. And that comes from Isaiah this time, Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. It's the song of the unfruitful vineyard. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it, and he hewed out a, a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it when I expected it to yield grapes? And, and why did it yield wild grapes? <laughs> we spoke a little bit about that yesterday, that, that a gardener or a farmer, when he plants a field or, or plants a garden, expects to get a harvest. And so when we look at God as the sower of the seed, the seed being God's word, and, and, and by the way, the, the analogy goes further when we call Jesus the word of God. John in his gospel calls Jesus the living word. When we receive that word, when we receive uh, knowledge, when we receive insight from Jesus, uh, from God, then God... Uh, 
expects a harvest from the planting, from the sowing of that seed. So where uh, the vineyard, uh, we are the vineyard that God plants. We are the garden in which God places us. And uh, we are the soil upon which the seeds of God's word are planted. So how does that image uh, form your view of God? Does it, does, it, does it create a sense of responsibility that once God has planted his seed within us, that we are to bear fruit for God's kingdom? Does it create a, a sense of, um, of, uh, of being expected uh, to respond to God in ways that are life-giving and, and life-affirming? What fruit do you believe that uh, God desires from uh, your life? Uh, from our lives, from the church as, as the body of Christ in the world? What God-given gifts and graces do you possess that, that God would desire a harvest from those gifts? So I want you to think about it. We, we talked a little bit about the barriers to God's uh, uh, word You know, in our lives. We can become busy. We can be uh, closed-minded about those barriers. But now I want you to think about and list what do you believe are your gifts and your talents from which God might expect a harvest for God's purposes here on earth, as I like to say, as it is in heaven. Hey, friends, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this week as we've unpacked the parable. We've got one more day. Uh, think about uh, how your gifts and talents uh, can be used for God's great purposes. Maybe write them down, maybe alongside the barriers that you believe uh, keep you from fulfilling the harvest that God might expect in your life. Let's pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for your presence in our lives, for the purpose upon which you have placed uh, your seed, your word within us. And may we bear fruit for your kingdom, and may we be the people and the church uh, that you've created us to be. We pray for this in the name of Christ our Lord and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, friends, and God bless.